Hello YouTube, in this video I'm going to show you how you can bring back a Netgear router N600 that has a very bad corrupted firmware. The model number for this router is the WNDR 3400 version 2. I have done everything to this router to try to, to make it work. When I try to access it through the IP address, uh, it nothing works. I've tried everything and I have no idea how many things I tried, uh, when I tried to log into it with the Ethernet cable connected, of course, I, I would just get this, uh, and that's all. That's all I would get, and it, it wouldn't it wouldn't go away from that. Uh, I'm not sure if it will fix it 100% for you. You have to do this at your own risk, uh, but what I'm gonna show you is something that you should do only as the very last resort. If you're about to throw this away, you know, give this, a shot uh, it might work for you it might not uh, but it worked for me and my router is fully restored and working and I'm gonna show you what I did so one of the things that people have been talking about is something called the TFTP uh, this allows you to give your router a firmware update manually without it having to go through the internet uh, you want you do this when uh, the router is not connecting to the internet so you do it manually and I tried this and this didn't even work so I tried different versions of the TFTP and nothing worked so uh, I, I got desperate I started to look online and some people were talking about short circuiting the router and I was afraid of doing that but it actually worked in my case and I'm gonna show you what I did upload firmware to Netgear using a TFTP client. So you need two things from this. You need the firmware for your router and you also need the TFTP program. Let's do the TFTP first. Uh, the way I did it was I just went to Google and I did a search for uh, TFTP D64 PJ02. Uh, I got my first result from GitHub. I got this one. And I just want to say real quick, there's different ways of getting this program, but this is just the way I chose. Uh, you get code, you download the zip file, once you download the zip file, it goes here to your desktop if you put it there and then you unzip it and you should get this folder. You click on the master, you go to old releases, you go to 64 installer because I'm running a 64 bit system on my computer. And then I just download, uh, I installed the latest version. Once you do that, you're, you should get the program and it should be this one. And now you need the firmware, you need to, to get the firmware, you go to, you you do a Google search for Netgear support. Uh, then you go to this one, the one that says netgear.com uh, forward slash support. You type in your model number for your router. In, in my case, this video is about only the N, the WNDR3400. And it'll take a while. It's going to take a few seconds. And then this video is only for version 2. I don't know if it's going to work for version 1 or 3 because they're totally different on the inside on the on the chipboard. It's going to take a while and then you just go to downloads. And here are your for your firmware versions. You uh you click download and once you download, uh you're going to get another zip file, you unzip it and this would be the the file. It's only one file I think. Um but this is this is the only file you need. Okay. So once you have all that, we're going to move on to the next step. Now you want to set up the settings for your Ethernet cable. To do that, you go to the wireless symbol here and you go to uh, Internet and Network and Internet Settings. Uh, you go to Advanced Network Settings. You click Change Adapter Options because you want to mess with your Ethernet port. Uh, I have a bunch of them, but I know for a f you probably only have one though. But I know for a fact that when I connect my Ethernet cable to my laptop, the, the one that uses it is Ethernet 11. So I'm going to mess with those settings. I'm going to go to properties on my Ethernet cable. And then I'm going to go to the Internet Protocol version 4. I'm going to click on properties. And you're going to get this. You're going to choose, use the following IP addresses. And then you're going to go back to the, the website I told you about from Netgear. How to, this article and, you're, and it tells you what to type in. Uh, you type in this uh, 
168 uh, so forth so let me type that in so it's 192 168 uh, when you click on this one it populates by itself and then for the default gateway it's your router IP which is 192 16811. One. Most Netgear routers are dot one dot one. I know that TP link is dot zero dot one. Uh, usually it's one of those two for, for routers, but for Netgear it's usually dot one dot one. Uh, this you leave empty, don't worry about that, just click OK. Click uh, close because you're done. And now that you have set that up, we're going to go to the next step, which is. So now we're going to work with the TFTP program. We're going to run it. This is what the program looks like. So you want to go to the, this one that says TFTP client. Click on that tab. Um, make sure that you set your Ethernet port to the one that you just set up right now, which was 192.168. Dot one dot ten, which what you typed in right now. Uh, host the host is a router IP, so that one would be one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one. The port is usually always sixty nine. That's what the instructions had said, and the local file that's going to be your firmware for the router, the one that you downloaded. It's going to be this one that it wherever you put it, you can. I put it in my desktop, so I'm just going to drag it, uh, and that's all you have to do here. So next, we're going to open up command prompt. So go to your start, type in CMD, uh, hit enter. And you're going to write, type in this command, which is going to be ping minus T. And then your router address 192.168.1.1. You're going to hit enter. And it's going to try and ping your router. Uh, of course, right now it's not connected, so it's not going to do anything. But once you connect it, it's going to start showing some numbers here. Basically, going to get that uh, over and over again until you actually turn on your router, which is what we're going to do now. We're going to turn it on. And once uh, this is green, 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 and the four is on because that's where I connected the port, uh, we're good to go. We're going to go back here. And this is exactly what we want to see. We want to see uh, what I'm looking for is I only care about the TTL equals uh, 64. Um, in order for the TFTP to work, to load the firmware into your router, you need the TTL to be equal 100. And when it equals 100, this, this one right here, this, the first button should be flashing green. Let's see if I can, I'm sorry that I'm, it's not focused. Uh, this one should be flashing green. Now, for in my case, it never ever did that. There we go. So it never ever did that, and it would and it I I would reset it multiple times with different uh, different ways. Uh, I would wait ten seconds, twenty seconds, a minute, two. I would reset. I would hold the reset button and power it on. And when I did that, I would get. TTO equals 100 for three times and then it would say error and then it would just say re no no response. So I figured that it had to do something. It was something with the hardware, not the firmware or it, maybe it was both. I'm not 100% not sure. Of. But this, what I'm going to show you, this is what really uh, fixed it for me. So, all right, guys. So uh, for the next step, you're just going to uh, disconnect okay, well, everything from your router. Uh, make sure it's nothing connected. You're going to unscrew the top lid from the bottom. There's six screws. Um, there's torque screws. Uh, but if you don't have a torque screw, you might you might be able to use a flathead, a small flathead like I did. Uh, it worked for me. Hopefully it does for you, too. This is what you're going to work with. So take please take a good look at it. This is what your chip uh, chipboard should look like it should look exactly like this and remember this video is only for this for this version of the of the of the router now uh, what I'm going to show you is something uh, as to do as a last resort do at your own risk disclaimer I'm not responsible if you break your router or if you you know if you do something cause a fire uh, but 
I'm just going to show you a small trick that worked for me. Uh, hopefully it does for you. So you're only going to be messing with this, this chip right here. Um, when you power on your router, yeah, I mean, when you connect your uh, electricity to your router, uh, you're going to power it on and you're also going to hook up the Ethernet cable. That way you can know what's happening over here with your TTLs. Once you do that, uh, you're also going to be monitoring the first LED right here. This first LED is the power one, so it tells you what what the status of your router is. If it's on, if, it, if, it's, if it's solid green, that means it's on. If it's um, orange, you know, that's it's still loading or there's something wrong. What we're looking for is for it to be blinking green. So this one should be blinking green. Because when it's blinking green, that means that you can do a TFTP. Because your TTLs over here were, are going to equal 100. And that's exactly what we want. So for that step, you're just going to connect the, like, the power, turn it on. Uh, be careful not to do anything else, not to click on anything else because this is uh, there's electricity running through this thing. And I know some people probably don't like this, but there was another way that I could find how to fix this router. I was about to throw it away, but I decided to do this last minute. Um, some people talk about J41 serial pins and... But you know what? There's not enough information on the internet or fixes on how to do this. And it's you have to buy a USB cable. So I'm not going to go that route. Um, but this did work for me. So once you power on your, your router and you have it hooked, the internet hooked to your PC, um, you're going to tap the first two pins for about a second. And then you're going to let go. And you're going to be monitoring your this LED. You want to see if it, what kind what it does. Uh, you don't want to hold it for too long because I don't know what will happen. But if that doesn't work, you, then you just move on to the next two pins. I think when I first did this for the first time, I tapped on the on these first two and then nothing happened. So I moved on to these two. And then I think I moved on to these two. And then once I hit something, this, grand, this uh, LED started flashing green. And over here on my... TTLs I kept on getting a hundred just like earlier we were getting um, 64 uh, these would switch all to 100 and once you have that once you have it at 100 that means that you can now do a TFTP so now you go back to this program make sure it's on the correct uh, port I don't know why it likes to switch and once you have the TTL equal 100 continuously you're gonna press put and this should load up in like five seconds. And when that happens, you're going to get a, a message that looks like this. Um, once you have that, it's a success. It's a success story. And you have restored your router. Uh, make sure you to leave it powered on for another four or five minutes, maybe 10 if you want, uh, just to make sure that it completely fully loads the firmware on there because it after it loads it, it has to install it. So just keep it on for a while. Give it 10 minutes and then you can power it off and then you can actually now connect your modem to it and set up your router like if like if it was your the first time you have you are setting it up and this is how you uh, can restore your router uh, this worked for me and routers working fine now um, but please uh, do this only as a last resort and if you've tried everything else and nothing else has worked um, you're gonna be you're gonna want to mess with this chip right here and it once you do uh, and you get this light blinking green and your TTLs are at 100 that means that you can now uh, upload the firmware using the TFTP so I hope this video helps you and I hope you can restore your router like I did uh, thanks for watching see you again next time